with the conclusion of the X-Men tour, the drop of both these projects. We've seen how these rock star, rage influenced artists have came up under the influence of Playboy Cardi. But how is it possible that they've managed a nationwide tour on their own? Yeah, it seems like both their faces have been everywhere recently, but had these guys not been on tour this whole time, for Ken, his project wouldn't have been performing nearly as well. And he needed some bangers for this tour. He's been performing the same tracks for over a year now. And this persona he's building, this rage culture character, we know that there's an influence from Cardi, but I think Ken is following his blueprint a little too closely and a little too quickly. And I think too early on in his career, his sound has become more about the hits and less about the music. This is why Cardi is so successful. He spent years developing his sound, developing his fan base, and this character that comes out when he performs, that's something that's been carefully crafted throughout these years. His shows have now become some of the most highly anticipated performances. Playboy Cardi, he has that wow factor. He has that thing that continuously brings people in. So for Ken to skip, these years of development, I don't think that's a good look for him if we're talking longevity of his career. And if he were to drop another project like this, that wow factor is not gonna be there anymore. And don't get me wrong, there's definitely some hits on this album, but it's not anything that we haven't seen from him before. Yeah, from the looks of it, the crowds are going crazy, but this is the same Ken Carson that back in 2021, Lyrical Lemonade, Summer Smash, he had fans skipping the Juice World tribute in Chicago to go to the Lenny's tent. And so he's drawing in all these decent sized crowds because his sound was something somewhat new. Or they had just tapped in with his new album at the time and they had seen that he actually had something special going on. And for him, just having dropped Project X, this performance definitely made for a pretty memorable experience. And it was only a couple months later that he was performing at Smokers Club in San Bernardino. The crowd that was there was massive. And so to watch the growth of this character in such a short time span, it was pretty incredible to see how many people were pulling up to see Ken Carson. And not long after that, he returns to Summer Smash for the second time. And after seeing the crowds that he was drawing in, whose idea was it to put him back in the Lenny's tent? So Ken Carson was the front runner of this new label. He was leading this newer rage influenced wave that had been going on. But we can't discuss the success of Cardi's label without talking about the character that had been slowly growing and carefully crafting his project before his first debut in the spotlight. Destroy Lonely has become much less unfamiliar with the drop of his project, No Stylist, whereas before this he's been somewhat of a mysterious character following in the footsteps of his label executive Playboy Cardi. But now from what we've seen from the success of this album, the production quality, the flows and storytelling capabilities that this kid possesses, it seems as if he's the final puzzle piece to the label that is Opium. And it's being revealed to us that the plan all along was to get Destroy Lonely into the spotlight. So before the drop of No Stylus, the general audience didn't quite know who this guy was. You might have heard some talk about him. And if you were looking at just streaming services, it's hard to get an understanding as to who this guy is because he hasn't dropped a project in over two years. And as far as social media presence and promotion for this album, So something that you might have seen was Ken Carson declining the XXL freshman list because Destroy Lonely wasn't chosen as one of those 10 artists to represent the class this year. I know the general thought was, why is Ken Carson giving up his spot for someone who hasn't had a presence in hip hop in over two years? This guy is just coming up in the game right now. I know the main question is, who is this guy anyways? But now, with the drop of No Stylus, it's become clear as to why Destroy Lonely was deserving of one of those 10 spots on the XXL freshman list this year. And after two years of anticipation for this project, No Stylus finally drops. Both these projects have been out for some time now. This video is taking me a little bit longer than expected, but if you've liked it so far, you should like and subscribe because I'm gonna be posting content just like this and I wouldn't want you to miss out on it. So back to the video, very quickly I need to go over how these albums actually came out and why that's important for us to understand because it all comes back to their ties with Opium. 
So first we have Destroy Lonely announcing his no stylist project in March of 2020, which was two years prior to the actual drop. And for Ken Carson, in a sense deleted tweet, he had announced his project for the first time in October of 2021. And that was only half a year before the actual drop. Now Lonely, he had taken some interviews within this time period. Bruce called no stylist. No stylist. Yeah. Project, no stylist, I'm sure there. Is it still gonna be called no stylist? Hell yeah. The fuck? But Ken, he hadn't done anything like this. The only promotional content he had was the shows that he was doing and the random drop of that Lost Files project leak or whatever that was. Fans thought this was the album, but he confirmed that it wasn't and that something else was coming. In this same time period, Destroy Lonely gets on Instagram Live to tell us that the album's finished and that he had just signed Opium, joining Ken Carson as a signee under Playboy Cardi's new label. It'd be damn near done, but I mean, it's done. But I want to put more songs on that bitch. No style is hard as fuck. Okay. So with Destroy Lonely now being signed to Opium, there's a lot more hands on this project, and this leads him to announce that he's restarting it from scratch. And so over this next year, a lot more publicity is coming to these guys' names. They're both doing shows, they're dropping some fire snippets on Instagram, and of course, the announcement of the X-Man tour, and only a month apart, they dropped their projects July 8th and August 12th, respectively. All right, we've seen the difference of what two years compared to a couple months can make. Now you need to understand why quantity over quality is not something that's gonna work with this newer generation of artists. Even if it may seem that way right now. <clears throat> So briefly back to Ken Carson's X project, starting with these first three tracks. Intro has this super fire beat and it's definitely familiar to the Ken Carson that we know. And tracks two and three are pretty similar. They're supposed to be an ode to this new sound that he's trying to establish. But three songs in and this album's already starting to feel exhausted. But tracks four, five, and six is where this project picks up. Nobody was the first song that actually went pretty hard in my opinion. But we're already seeing this reoccurring theme of Ken Carson just can't finish his song. Yes, the first 30 seconds to a minute are gonna be lit, especially if you're gonna be in those mosh pits. But if he were to just cut these songs down instead of trying to fill space, he'd have a much better outcome and a much longer duration of time listened. Go is a great example of this. He kept it short, the vocals are sturdier, and it made for a pretty fire song. Plus, this was the chosen song to receive a music video upon the release of this project, and it's his intro to his tour, meaning he comes out to this song. This is the style I believe Ken Carson should be going for. So after his self-titled track, he falls back into that same issue I was talking about earlier. And unfortunately, now we have a pretty good understanding as to what's to come for the rest of this project. The repetitiveness of each song, the wasted potential on such great beats, it cements the idea that Ken Carson's determined to make his own sound. He doesn't want to be known as the Cardi clone or the V-Lone soldier. He wants to be known as Ken Carson. He has said before that he just wants to make music to turn up to, but carelessly dropping projects like this that are only relevant at a certain point in time, this is not how you maintain an audience. And with the conclusion of this project, you're only left remembering two things, Freestyle 2 and the Destroy Lonely features. Thankfully, Ken had Freestyle 2 at least, a simple but fire track that's catching attention, it's going viral, and of course, the Destroy Lonely features. And what's dope is that this was the first time that we were seeing that no stylist Destroy Lonely. In similar fashion, for No Stylist, these first three songs do a fantastic job of setting the pace for what's to come. Jet Lag, the first track on this project, puts you in this arcade-like universe, the beats are hella hard, and the bars are super bouncy. Tracks two and three follow the same pattern, the beats are still going crazy, and Lonely's just spitting on these tracks. And on top of all this, his vocals compared to his usual dirty mixing sounds so much better in my opinion. This is how you start a project, especially if you're not mainstream or you're not as known. These first three songs do the job of introducing you to Lonely if you haven't met him already. And this project just gets better with tracks four, five, and six. And with these songs, he's saying, this is me, this is my style, and here's what you can expect going forward. This album is the closest sound I've heard to something mainstream coming from an underground artist. Track four is the best example of this. You can just tell the effort that was put into the creation of this song. The beats fire, the hook's super catchy, and of course, that second fire verse to make you stay for the entirety of the song. And No Stylist, his number one song, self-titled and highly anticipated. So now, six songs in, instead of knowing what's to come, as a content consumer, you're left in anticipation 
anticipation and excitement for what's going to happen next. And with these two so-called counterparts both taking a different approach with their sound and their style, now we can see the importance of quality over quantity, the difference between Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely. So I've given my thoughts on X, I've given my thoughts on No Stylus and how these guys managed to accomplish a tour on their own. Ken Carson's quick to announce a new project while Destroy Lonely's outperforming him in every way. We've discussed the aspects of these individuals, how even if they've shared the same goals, they're separated in likeness because of how they've chosen to display themselves to the world. And this all comes back to the genius mind of Playboy Cardi. These guys are both doing what it takes to separate themselves, to show that they have something different going on. And the same things that they're trying to accomplish are the same things that separate Playboy Cardi. Over the years, he's calculated each move that he's taken. And this character he's managed to uphold has continuously left fans wanting more. Playboy Cardi is known to take his time, known to impress us with each project that he drops. And now, with this character he's crafted, Every time he's set to perform, nobody wants to miss it because we don't know if that's going to be the night that he reveals a new chapter to us.